Hey guys, this is Paulina, and in this video, we're going to look at the conditionals. Woo hoo! Are you as excited as I am? I hope you are. This video is going to be quite short. I think it's easy peasy. So have a good look and come to class prepared. Uh, for this grammar point, we're going to use a photocopies from destination B1. So if you want some extra information, you can have a look at the grammar reference in our books. But this information is a little bit different, more appropriate for your pet exam. Okay, first question, what are the conditionals? Some sentences with word if are called conditional sentences. With every conditional sentence, there are two parts a situation and the result of that situation. It is the situation that starts with if. There are different types of conditional sentences depending on what the situation is. Have a look at some helpful hints. When we start the sentence with if, we separate the situation and the result with a comma. If you join a gym, comma, I'll join too. When we start the sentence with a result, we don't use a comma. I'll join a gym if you join a gym. And our first conditional is zero conditional. It's if plus present simple, comma present simple. We use it to talk about general or scientific facts. If people eat too much, they often get fat. If students study a lot, they get good results from your pet exam. First conditional, that's if plus present simple, comma, will plus bare infinitive. Do you remember what bare infinitive meant? Yay! No to, no ing, just a verb. We use the first conditional to talk about real or likely situations in the present and future and their results. For example, if you take these pills, you will start to feel better very soon. If you start revising for your pet exam now, I am sure it will help you. And there are two helpful hints. We can also use other models instead of will, depending on the meaning. If you get some rest, you might feel better tomorrow. Maybe yes, maybe not. You might feel better. And we can also use an imperative instead of will to give instructions. If you don't feel well, go home. Next, second conditional. If plus past simple, comma, would plus bear infinitive. We use second conditional to talk about impossible or unlikely situations in the present and future and their results. For example, if my legs were longer, I would be a much faster runner. If Paulina was taller, she could touch the ceiling or the roof. And again, look at these helpful hints. We can also use the second conditional to give advice, we use the phrases if I were you and if I was you for this. This looks really nice in your writing in the email. If I were you is more formal than if I was you. Have a look at these. If I were you, I would eat less chocolate. If I was you, I'd eat less chocolate. And time for the last conditional on our list, the third conditional. It's if plus past perfect simple, comma, would plus have plus past participle. We use third conditional to talk about unreal situations in the past and their unreal past results. For example, if the chemist had been open, I would have bought some aspirin. The chemist wasn't open, so I didn't buy any aspirin. If I had listened to you, I would have cooked a chicken for too long. 
if I listened, I listened to you, so I didn't cook the chicken for too long. If I hadn't eaten a giant pizza, you wouldn't have been sick. You ate a giant pizza, so you were sick. And here are some helpful hints. We can also use could or might instead of would, depending on the meaning. If you had eaten a giant pizza, you might have been sick. It's possible, but not certain that you would have been sick. If Mary had told me she was coming, I could have cooked a nice meal. I would have been able to cook a nice meal, right? And that's all for today. If you have any questions, ooh, watch out, there's one more thing. The third conditional is the only conditional that refers to the past. That is important. If I had had a headache, I would have taken an aspirin in the past. And we use past simple in the second conditional, but that does not refer to the past. If I had a headache, I would take an aspirin. Okay, now I'm sure you know it all about this. If you need any extra information, I invite you to have a look at the grammar reference pages in your course book. Um, thank you very much for your attention and watching this video. And to make this presentation, I've used uh, information from Destination B1 from Macmillan, units 28 and 29 on pages 118 and 121. Thank you very much. Bye.